and we on. Hello. This is hello. hello, Chet. This is Chet Czar, everybody. Um, welcome to Masters of Lowbrow. Uh, our first guest. We're bursting the cherry with the one and only Chet Czar. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, Yay. Yay. Happy. Happy. We're not going to sing that happy song, though. People get <laughs> killed texting it when they're driving to work or whatever I hear. Um, yeah, this is Masters of Lowbrow. I guess I'll just kick it as to what this show actually is about. And it's just about the show about nothing, kind of like Seinfeld, where it's a show about nothing. But the show is about, so there's no predetermined, we'll just let it flow as it goes and see where we wind up. Um have no problem about finding issues to talk about because we're sitting here with one of the most talented professional people in show business that I know <laughs> personally and that is yes um oh, that's nice yeah I've known Chef for years man I, I went back when I was a painter in Virginia I really didn't know anybody face to face any other artists there's barely there's nothing going on in Virginia art wise really um but barely <laughs> So uh, every time, like, I curated a show, you're the first person that I wrote, and boom, within, like, ten minutes, you'd be like, yes. And, it, dude, you know, just a geeky fan moment type of thing where <laughs> you turned into the go-to guy for me in a way, like, oh, will you, will you help me? Will you help me? And you always help, man. And that's, like, a major thing, you know. Just very oh, lucky. Cool. Very lucky to know you. That's the way oh, I look thanks. at it, you know. Um, well, we got to support each other, you know. We yeah. already got enough going against us as artists in yes. general, you know. I gotta see back that. each other up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean you'd probably know thousands and thousands of artists and um, everybody's in it for their own reason. You know, it's kind of like joining the army. Like, some people join it because they need the college money. Some people mm -hmm. do art because um, because they're passionate about it and they don't give a shit. Or if they're in the army, they just want to kill a motherfucker. That's all. Yeah. You know, and then some people do it because they have pride in their country, you know. So there's a yep. lot of different personality types in this art bubble that we're living in, you know. And uh, to be so lucky to come out and meet, you know, meet and know someone who is, like, graciously humble and sincere right from the start is a major thing. It's very lucky because I met nothing but dickheads after you, Chet. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, everyone's cool. Everyone's pretty cool. Business is business, yeah. but, you know. Yeah, most people, you know, seem cool. Most people in the art scene seem, uh, art scene seem really cool to me, but, um, you know, I also noticed that the more, the bigger, kind of the bigger I get, the more everybody's really nice to me, so it's, like, kind of hard to tell it really how is. people really are sometimes. It, it it's like, oh, all of a sudden, everybody's really nice in the world. <laughs> yeah, and that's a good thing. Ignorance is bliss, man. You know what I mean? If they're nice to you, just go for it. Take it for what it is, you know? Yeah, not many haters. Why? Yeah, you know, I think you give what you get in life. You know what I mean? It is a really instant karma yeah. thing. So, and your thing, like reading your interviews in the past, it was always like, "Oh, I asked Chet Zara, I asked Chet Zara this," and your number one like mantra was just be nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's hard for a lot of people, though, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's impossible to follow for some people, and to good-hearted people who are like easygoing and passionate about what they're doing it shouldn't be so hard you know yeah uh, it doesn't it seems obvious to me yeah it should you know be what i mean it should be it's um, like why wouldn't you help instead of hurting why I, I don't i don't see why you would even do that you know why would you be an asshole when you could be cool it doesn't make any sense to me you know? Asshole people get nothing done, as far as I'm concerned. They're stuck <laughs> on stupid, and they're going down that road. It's like a train on fire that, that has no more fucking brakes, and they just keep going and going, and they don't stop and just think, you know. They're wasting too much time and energy on uh, just their negativity. They don't, They like it, though. A lot of them like it. It's yeah, it's and, weird. It's definitely a weird ego trip yeah, thing. But, you know? I, but we did death to ego, though. You're, That's right. Ego's dead, man. <laughs> I killed it. You killed it last <laughs> October, was it? Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. That Anything was crazy of being a, se a sequel, maybe? You go. Um, well, I don't know about a sequel, um, but 
you know, I have another show there in October at Copra. And so I do have an idea that I think will be as good as or better even than the Ego Death show. Really big and epic like that, but I'm probably going to have to do another Kickstarter for it. So right. hopefully people people aren't sick of me asking for money. You know um, what? It's you know, <laughs> and I'm, I I got to get my rewards out. I mean, I'm still haven't got my rewards out from. I've got I'm like over halfway done now, but it's just like it's uh, taken so much time. It's crazy, but well, totally worth it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's another thing with you too. It's like. I've seen you, I mean, we like met before when you had the paintings laid out for the Ego Death show. And oh, I yeah, right. Had, like, a month, That's when you came by. It. I came by, you, came, you had a month. You dropped, off, you dropped off that amazing painting you did of me. That thing was Thank uh, you, dude. Unbelievable. Thank you. That was like been for you the whole time, but the gallery's like, no, maybe we could sell it. So it got lost in limbo <laughs> somehow, and then it just wound up where it was meant to go, finally in your hands. Yeah, you know? uh, I, I still owe you a piece, so I well, haven't forgotten. Now it's, in, now it's in the public record. Mi casa su casa. <laughs> and that's as far as we go here with dialect, you know. Um, anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You're... I think that um, another thing about you is that you, that's what amazed me is i seen the beginning of these paintings, and you were in real, like, focused work mode. Like, you still were chill, just like you are now, you know. But um, you were like, no, this needs to get done. This needs to be to get done. No going out. No, no spare time, really. I just need to focus on this. And not just for yourself or for who you are as an artist, but for everybody, people expecting things of you. I mean, that's like the, one of the most responsible fucking things that I've seen in a long time. And you pulled it <laughs> off, dude. I mean, the opening night, I was like really proud of you, like... This guy had a vision, he followed through with it, got a lot of people involved, and everybody supported him thus, thus, thusly, and oh my <laughs> god, it was beautiful, dude, just beautiful. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was, it, you know, I definitely felt like I couldn't, I, I couldn't blow it off, I had to give it, you know, as much as I possibly could, because you know, all these people just backed me up, and yeah. you know. I raised over seventy grand, and it's like people have that much faith in, in my abilities, and I better give them an amazing show. So you yeah. know, I spent all the money making the show, yeah, and as the, good as I possibly could. The proof and, was uh, in the pudding, dude. Everywhere you looked around, oh, just in the fine details of like the the uh, stained glass windows with your design yeah, it was, in them, and just you know, that was, But it was, you know, it, it was. It was also really the whole thing was very cosmic. I'm telling you, from the time I did the Kickstarter until the time I the show happened, it was like everything lined up perfectly. It was right. crazy. I, the uh, the uh, initial concept came actually on a, it was New Year's midnight at New Year's the, the, uh, 2013. Yeah. Now, um, I started the year off by doing this kind of mushroom trip um, by myself in the room, you know, in my studio with the lights off for the for the purpose of coming up with an idea for a show and getting spiritually grounded and connected, you know, not partying or anything. It was very much like a, you know, spiritual thing for me, That's which is what it is. And so um, I... I took these mushrooms, sat down, waited, I had the intention, I wanted this idea for a really good idea for an amazing show, and, you know, within the first 10 minutes, it was just like, boom, it just kind of popped in my head, it's like, okay, now what? <laughs> it, was yeah. just, it was so, just like, something, it was this I, concept was given to me, and I was like, oh my god, this is perfect, so then the rest of the year was spent trying to figure out, you know, how the, it was going to happen. The logistics of it, yeah. And, um... I eventually came around to the idea of doing a Kickstarter campaign at the last minute. And, uh, every, like I said, everything just clicked. It's like it came together easily and the, the, the donations were through the roof. And I painted that whole show in three months, including the sculpting of the frame corners. And I'd never painted it that fast in my life. It was just cosmic. I could see weird. it, man. Like, I could see it on your face. I was in the flow. Yeah, you yeah. Know? You were in a you weird. were like a spectral being, let's say. You do not you did not walk up walk amongst us, let's say, in that time. Like there was something <laughs> going on with you there. 
And it's like, wow, how can I get a piece of that? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice, man. It's it great, great. Yeah, thanks. It was just, uh, I'm just grateful that it all worked out so well. It was well, really... you know, it's, you know, sometimes you can't take complete credit by yourself because it's like, where did that idea come from? I mean, I believe right. that it just shows there is a destiny, dude. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. way I've been seeing. Like, you oh, gotta yeah. trust in the signs and wonders sometimes, and just follow through yeah. and trust them because it's I, really, yeah, it's I a completely gift. agree. It's a gift to you. Yeah. So you might as well just, if you're not good at accepting gifts, you're kind of fucked in this life yeah. because <laughs> life is not very nice to people or not very nice to themselves. You know? Yeah. So if you get those little gifts, who knows, man? One little thing in the box could explode into something big. Yeah. You know? Mm. Um, yeah. 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 I'm, not, I'm with you 100. percent It's not a bad way to be, you know. Um, yeah, that just to, to me that just kind of proved the theory because it's like it, you know it's like okay if this if this is true and there is this spiritual realm or whatever you want to call it and you can and and good things come from that and you can you can take those things and spread joy and have them be good and come into fruition in the real world then that just proved it because it was like that for me it just i got the the idea came to me as if from somewhere else and everything just lined up perfectly nice. and you know like i like i said there's paintings were done in three months and that's wow. crazy it was crazy there you know for me there that would have taken six months at least normally it's hard and to it say just, dude i mean i know with you with your workflow i mean i can't tell only you only the artist knows because some paintings you do in like two days and you're just like uh, it's out of my system and and uh some it takes you weeks or something and they both kind of are both technically genius but it's like how would anybody know how long it took kind of but all of those mm -hmm, paintings yeah. in that show meant something it was all like a narrative somewhat going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, there was for sure. It all flowed together where, no, nah, and it was like raising the bar again for you. And, you know, mm. maybe as a gift to you, like you brought it. And I don't know, maybe it just re to reaffirm next time you're in this situation, well, which will probably be soon again, that you don't have to worry so much. That, right, you know, right. Um, as long as you follow through and do the work, Dude, you know, yeah. just by numbers alone, everything's going to work out fine, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Definitely. What do we yeah, have coming up, dude? Do we? Do you have a show? You're always uh, busy. I got that. I got it. Let's see. Right now, I, I kind of turned down most group shows this year just to try and uh, slow down a little bit. Because towards the end, you know, after the Ego Death show, it was just like, you know, oh my God, I'm going to die if I... Uh, keep going at this rate and actually before that happened i think that was the year before i threw my back out so bad that i could not get out of bed and it was oh. from just working 16 hours a day for years and years every single day you know because yeah. i just you know i can i can focus on um if i decide to focus on something which i have on my my art and my art career um, I can really focus on it. And I, I get kind of obsessive and workaholic, sort of. So, um, but it, it, my back got so messed up, and I was literally, I couldn't get out of bed, I couldn't walk, and I felt like it was sort of my body telling me that if you don't stop this, stop this, you're probably going to die of a heart yeah. attack or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so after I uh, did the ego death show, and and you know. Got it. Kind of took me a year to slow down, though. I had so much momentum going and so many things in the works that uh, all throughout 2013, I was kind of finishing up things, and I pr uh, intentionally kept 2014 open so I could nice. not be working 24/7 all the time, constantly. And so um, I basically have just been uh, doing some commissions and and stuff at a slower pace so it's it's nice you know i saw a photograph recently i think today there was like 10 you know how you usually do it there was like 10 pieces laid up of like separate separate portraits or studies i don't know if um, you're going to be putting them into larger grandiose paintings or if those because just those studies alone are beautiful dude you know what i mean oh thanks yeah well no, i just it's uh there, i just uh i'm at a point where i need to money for mortgage so yeah. <laughs> this is what it you know it's 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 a nice position to be in though you know i'm not i'm definitely still struggling every month i, I live 
month to month, pretty much. And because um, you know, I'm not getting huge prices for these paintings, and I didn't sell the Ego Death Show, show out. It sold like I think over half of it, which is a lot for me. Yeah, I never, I've never sold a show out. No, you know? and uh, and my prices aren't super crazy, so I'm definitely not getting rich at this point. But um, I do have a. Uh, I'm at a point where if I need some money, I can make some studies, and they sell pretty much right away because they're affordable. And there's a lot of uh, collectors that that can afford, you know, 350 bucks or whatever for a little study. And so, if I do a bunch of them, then I can make my mortgage payment. And then I have a bunch of little studies for ideas for larger paintings I can use as well. So it's you know, oh Chet, you're so responsible. You know. Chad, one of the most responsible guys <laughs> in the industry, I guess. But uh, no, that's what happens when you're done. as long as you're doing the work and just putting out the work, man. It has a way of if you need something so bad, love, yeah, it'll it. come it's to fun. you. You know, yeah, you're doing what you love. I mean, you know what I mean. I yeah. mean, just a blessed life all the way yeah, around. Yeah, I feel like you know? yeah, I feel like I yeah, I feel like I've gamed the system in a way. You know, it's like I've I've figured out how to earn a living, pay bills, which you have to do in this world, by doing something I would be doing anyway. Right. And so you feel, you know, even if I, even though I'm not rich or anything, it's still like, I feel like I'm, you know, before I was working, working in the film industry, especially the last few years, it was like every day I felt like I'm just wasting my life because it's, it's, uh, I'm working on someone else's thing and their thing might not be any good for one thing and even if it is good it's mine's just a little piece right and this thing that i'm not really that into and now i feel like i'm always whenever i'm doing working i'm it's for me it's right. for my future it's you know it's for myself and it, it matters and it counts you know so i'm making money and doing something that matters to me so it's it's all good yeah yeah i was thinking that too it's like you know you've got You've got all this amazing sculptural talent, and do you still get calls from like the industry saying, <laughs> "You got your light up here. Oh my gosh, I look kind of cool though. <laughs> no, I know for a minute there, didn't feel cool though. Didn't feel cool. Um, yeah, jeez, you know. Um, did do you get calls still from the industry or people, uh, your friends in the industry, saying, "Chet, I need your monster." Uh, once in a while, uh, probably. I don't know, maybe two or three times a year I'll, I'll take a film gig. Yeah, yeah. Just, just for the money, you know, if it's a short one. Yeah. Uh, and I could still, I still enjoy the process of sculpting um, when it's limited like that, you know. It was more more the day in, 40 hour a week thing they got. Yeah. <clears throat> one thing, but, yeah. One, one great thing about like being a fan of your work is that you always raise the bar with things and sometimes you switch it up. Like, you say, you're always switching things up and, you know, I just like, I don't know, just as a geek, I just love to, love to see a Chet Zars, like, Mad Monster Party with the puppetoons, your own original oh, man. characters. I would or, love that. Yeah, that would be fucking awesome, oh, dude. Yeah. That's just, def something like that is in my mind as well. Something like that. In the future. I don't know what. I mean, yep. this is Hollywood, dude. You know what I mean? I'm sure you're <laughs> approached all the time by... I mean, I'm sure that you know enough people to make every aspect or every dream that you know pretty much come true. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, it all comes down to the the money. Just That's what it is. That, that all that money. That money is always the funny, you know? <laughs> you know, it's like you can, you can kick dreams to people, but once you mention money, the fucking floor drops out of the room. And, yeah. you know, um, there's dreamers with money, and sometimes dreamers with money most likely come to you, not right away, but eventually in the right time, you know? Right, yeah. And yeah, uh, that. that's usually how it works out. I mean, yeah. you, you never get, you're never overburdened too much, but as long as it's consistent, as long as you're not having a heart attack, as long as your health is okay, you know, yep. we're fine, you know? <laughs> yep. Chat, we're gonna close this out, right? I think we're good. You know, this is the first show. Chad Czar, um, Masters of Lowbrow. I think, um, I think we're good, man. We're gonna be looking yeah. forward to the future and how everything's going on. Um, for those who are just familiarizing yourself with Chet, um, ChetZar.com. 
Um, yep. Just looked at your blog today. It's fucking awesome. Uh, the it, all Lolly's paintings on there um, on Facebook. Uh, the Chet's Army. You can sign uh, up for to be a yeah. Part of that, There's a or? few different groups. I don't know. Yeah, Chet's yeah. Are. If you do search Chet's Are on Facebook, you could you could find it. Always uh, interesting, dude. Always interesting. Chet's Are Art Group. Chet's Are Art Group. That's it. Showing old pictures of what you yeah, know what yeah. I mean, and just like, oh, there he is, you know, and <laughs> uh, just rock star moments, you know, just so interesting, dude. What a great. What a great life, and just honored to have you on the show, and honored and happy that you're my friend, dude. I'll be hitting yeah, you up for shit in the future, because that's what <laughs> friends are for. That's right. Anytime, man. All right. Thank you, Chet. We're going to talk <laughs> to you right. again soon. Thanks for tuning in to our show, Masters of Lowbrow. Next week, we'll have someone who's probably not as cool as Chet Czar, but we'll work on that. <laughs> Good night. Bye-bye.